Shalom, shalom, shalom. Grace and peace, everybody. And thank you for tuning in to another video on the Ezra Ben Kazar channel, where we discuss Kazarian history, culture, genetics, and Judaism. Today, we have an exciting uh, paper that was revealed uh, very recently uh, in the, this week uh, or the past week, depending on when you see this video. Um, but this paper actually gives us descriptions on how the Khazars looked. And we have some interesting things. So let's uh, dive right into it. The paper is called DNA Phenotyping of Remains from Elite Burials of the Khazar Period of Southern Russia. And here's the abstract. It reads, ancient DNA analysis helped to solve the problems related to the geno-geographic origin and migration patterns of populations. The Khazar cognate is a subject of controversy among researchers. Its complex historical development, lack of a sufficient number of artistic and written sources, the disappearance of representatives of Khazar culture, leaves open the question of the appearance of the Khazars. DNA phenotyping of bone remains from elite burials of the Khazar period of southern Russia was carried out with respect to eye color, hair color, skin color, and ABO blood groups. Eight out of ten individuals had brown eyes, dark hair to varying degrees, and a predominantly dark skin during their lifetime. Individuals from two burials had gray-blue eyes, and one individual had blonde hair. The most probable ABO blood group was identified in eight people, of which five blood group O, one group, four had blood group A, two, and one had blood group B, group three. The allele frequency distribution was assessed for 10 population-specific autosomal markers and suggested high heterogeneity for the ethno geographic origin of the Khazars examined. The results are evidence for ethnocultural, genetic, and phenotypic diversity of the Khazar cognate. First, phenotype, what, what that, which is what we're mainly speaking on here, phenotype is the appearance of a human. And with the Khazars, this usually attracts less attention as compared with its political, social, and economic history. But we've all kind of assumed what the Khazars have looked like. But this week, we received concrete information on what the Khazars would have looked like, at least out of this group of 10 that's been studied before. We, we dived into these bodies already. The Khazar cognate formed in the second half of the 7th century. It occupied a vast area in the Volga, Don, over to the Nestor and the Dnieper re regions, also in the region of the Northeast Caucasus. Matter of fact, they influenced the total steppe zone of East Europe. Physical anthropological data and artistic written sources might only be used to describe the Khazar appearance in the pre-genomic era. A combination of anthropological types in the Khazars has been reflected in visual arts. So according to the craniological data, we see and it indicated that mongoloids prevail in the burial mounds of the Khazar period in the Don region. It predominated at 70% and they were most similar to those of the trans Baikalian Huns and the Turkic-speaking nomads of South Siberia, the Altai, and Kazakh. Caucasian features were observed in members of the Khazar population, and they are similar to those of the Saltovo Mayaki and the Sarmatian cultures of the Lower Don and Lower Volga regions. According to the written sources that we have, um, we know that Ishtakiri had wrote that the Khazars do not look like Turks, he said. They have black hair and fall into two categories. One is known as the Kata Khazar. They are so swarthy that their swarthiness turns into blackness, as if they were a category from India. The other category are white, 
handsome, and perfect in appearance. And then we have a somewhat different ver- version of this quote in the Persian version of Istikiri works that says, the Khazar people look like Turks, but they are not Turks. However, a division into the black and white people meant a division into two social categories in the Turks. The black Khazars uh, were a dependent population while the white Khazars were free. Now, this is what Ishtakiri wrote. We've spoken on the black Khazars multiple times. And if you need to a refresher, go back on to those videos. But today we are talking about appearance. We see that these quotes are strange and slightly contradicting. Um, Hakam Joe, as we have mentioned, has given clarity concerning this in our discussions that can be found on the channel. But now we will get the facts on if those dark skinned Khazars were truly quote unquote dependent. They've examined the remains of high ranking warriors, which have been found in mound burials of the lower Don region and assigned to the nomadic elite of the Kagane by the characteristic features of the burial ritual. The remains have been found in the burials together with a taxidermied harness mount horse and status attributes like belt decorated with metal plates, silver and gold plated vessels, jewelry and gold Byzantine coins. This work was to determine the markers related to eye color, hair color, skin color and blood groups and the remains that was found in the Rostov Oblast and assigned to the Khazar period. So the blood groups were found to be most common uh, were blood group O, and that occurred in five individuals. And we went into these bodies before. Blood group A was the second most common. Group B, with rather rare genotype B-02, was observed in individual 531 which was, uh, I think he was like an outlier. A lot of things was different about him. So now let's get into the appearance of these Khazars. First, let's talk about individual 67. Let's read about his burial. This is back from the paper called Diverse Genetic Origins of Medieval Steppe Nomad Conquerors. Some of these bodies were the ones that was examined for this paper that we're currently uh, reading. And let's read about the body. Sample 67. It was a Kurgan burial site found in the Rostov region, and the excavations were conducted in 1980. The mound, number 52, has two burials, and the main burial contained one skeleton of a 35 to 40 year old male dated to the 9th century. There was no square trench detected. The grave is of the pit type with the niche in the southern wall with the head of the skeleton to the west. The buried male was a mongoloid, approximately 35 to 40 years old. The skull is well preserved. The nose was fractured and the teeth chipped. The jaw showed signs of inflammation. It was probably broken. There were also damages to the joints of the heads of the hemperus and pelvis. The data shows that he would have been a brown eyed brunette with olive that's closer to dark skin. He had the haplogroup R, R1B, and he had the mongoloid skull. Next, we have individual 166 and a family of Kurgans found in the Rostov region. The remains were of a female aged 25 to 30 years old. The grave was not robbed and contained multiple items, including pieces of ironwork and stirrups. The burial is dated to the second half, 8th century and early 9th century. She was a brown eyed brunette with dark skin. Next, we have individual 457. Individual 457 might not have been from the same paper unless these are just different burials, but I don't have a uh, description of his burial site. But individual 457 was a brown eyed male with black or dark brown hair in the olive skin tone, haplogroup G2A or G2A2, and he had the skull of the mongoloid type, presumably. Individual 531 was also found in the Rostov region. In the Kurgan, at least five Khazar time burials related to the square trenches culture was found. 
It had a complete horse skeleton placed on the step and the remains of a Caucasoid male, 35 to 40 years old, uh, at the time of death was found. The site was robbed, however. There was also a fragment of a container with the horn, apparently the neck of a water skull, on the surface of which there were several signs of runic writing, dating of the burial to the, of the 8th to the 1st, 3rd of the 9th centuries. Individual 531 was a male with gray-blue eyes, light hair and a light olive skin tone haplogroup r r1a and the caucasian skull type individual 619 this sample was found in the rostov region it had an incomplete skeleton of the horse the skull and the limbs that was found in the grave and it contained one mongoloid supposedly male skeleton as 35 to 40 years old. The burial was not robbed in, and they found certain iron stirrups and a bronze part of a harness. They also found silver belt fragments and a belt buckle and the openwork belt lining of a horseshoe shape. A small golden rectangular plate was also found. Bone facings of onions were found. The dating of the burial from the 7th to early 8th centuries. And this individual had brown eyes with black and dark brown hair and an olive of skin tone. His habla group would have been Q and he had a mongoloid type skull. Individual 656. Who was found also in the Rostov region, likely of Caucasoid appearance of a male of 30 to 35 years old. At the bottom of the grave, there was an incomplete skeleton of a horse the skull and the limbs. There were iron stirrups, iron buckle, iron arrowheads, an iron quiver hook, quiver loops, fragments of iron blade weapons, ivory lining, oval shaped silver belt buckles were also found. And half of a Byzantine coin from the second reign of the Emperor Justinian II. Typical Turkic runes were scratched on the surface of the coin. And there were also coins like this, similar in size to the Byzantine coin. Therefore, the burial is dated to the first third of the 8th century and not before 705. Individual 656 was brown eyed male with black hair and light olive skin with haplogroup C, C3 or C2B. And he had the Caucasian skull type, very interesting. Individual 1251 found in the Rostov region. The grave was also robbed, but some artifacts and their fragments was left behind. A silver belt buckle and a silver ornamented tip of a belt, an iron knife and a fragment of an iron object that's possibly a saber and a round pot. There's also evidence that this could have been a hunchback man. The burial is dated to the early Khazar period. Sample 1251 was a brown eyed male with black or dark brown hair and an olive skin tone. Haplogroup R1A. Individual 1564, who we noticed before, had a Levant type if these burials are the same. He was more closer to the Natufian. He was found in the Rostov region. And it was the primary burial in Kurgan number three. It belonged to a male who was aged 25 to 35 years. It was robbed, leaving several items behind, such as a horseshoe-shaped ornament belt overlay in the Crimean Byzantine style, the fragments of ivory bow overlays, and the burial was dated from the late 8th to the early 9th century. He was a male with the gray-blue eyes, black or dark brown hair, and the olive skin of Haplogroup C, C3, or C2B, with a Caucasian skull type. Fascinating. Individual 1566, found in the Rostov region. It was the primary burial in Kurgan 9, a male aged 35 to 40 years old. The grave was of the steps type. It was robbed, leaving several three lobbed arrowheads, a gold earring with a bead, fragments of iron objects, and possible parts of a quiver. And it dated to the second half of the 8th century and early 9th century. This individual was brown-eyed male with black hair and olive skin tone. Have a group N or N1A and the skull was missing from the skeleton. 
individual in 1986 who was the primary grave of Kurgan III. It belonged to a male age 35 to 45, and he was buried along a horse and a camel. Found in it was arrowheads, ivory bow overlays, and a flail. Also a carved deer antler showing combat scenes between a rider and a foot soldier. Considering the item's complexity and level of craftsmanship, it is a rare find worldwide and the only one found in the Lower Dawn area. The burial is dated between the second half of the 8th and the early 9th century. In this individual was a brown-eyed male with dark or dark brown hair and dark skin, Habla group R1A, and the skeleton shows a combination of mongoloid and Caucasian features. Very fascinating. Individual 531 was the remains of a Caucasoid male, 35 to 40 years old. The site was robbed, but there were iron bits found, iron stirrups, and a fragment of a container with, with the horn on the surface, with the several signs of runic writing. And this individual had gray-blue eyes and a light olive skin tone, and showed Y DNA haplogroup R P two two four. Note that the other Khazar warriors with the same haplogroup had mostly olive skin, dark eyes, and dark hair. The finding supports the idea that the Y DNA haplogroup does not determine your phenotype. The data is not super surprising, but dark eyes and dark hair are expected for a population with a large mongoloid portion. The gray blue eyes are interesting, especially in 1564, the one closest to the Natufian. And the R1A 531, my haplogroup, had a uh, blonde hair, which is interesting as well. These are some outliers. But as we see, they did have olive to dark skin tones, which is very interesting that we usually believe that they were very light skinned. Uh, and we didn't find any with red hair, not yet. Unless the the, uh, the brown hair was uh, was the red. The light brown hair was could have been a red hair. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time. Shalom, grace and peace.